Okay, y'all. So I'm sure that there will probably be others joining us, but we're going to go ahead and start so we can get this show on the road. So right. good morning again. Y'all already know me. I'm Kiara Smith. Uh -huh. I'm here to be your host, even though all of us are going to work together. So I am not by any means trying to be the lead. Mm -hmm. I'm just the host. Let's work together. Let's let's come up with some good stuff so we can have an engaging school year next year. Today, we are going to be covering um, just some intro to cosmetology necessities, then some intro games and activities, team building games and activities. And then, of course, if there is enough time, I want to hop into the first two chapters that I typically cover in intro or history of cosmetology and life skills. I don't know what order you all go in, but those are the two chapters we're going to cover today. All right. So first for intro necessities, y'all, I was I just put some stuff on there. I don't know, um, you know, what you all do or how it is per state. I know for me, we do have to have the required documentation. We have to go through the permits. Um, our students do have to pay for their permits, so we have to collect money. I just wanted to hit our intro kits if you all did stuff like that, just to kind of give us some ideas of things that we may want to incorporate into our own programs. Um, so like I said, for me, we do permits. In previous years, I've had my students do the permits um, on paper. However, I think I need to update and just allow them to do it like through DocuSign or some type of online thing just to kind of, because the permits come back, their names are spelled, their names are all jacked up. Everything's jacked up because they don't write legible enough. So does do, do y'all do permits? Does anyone have to do a permit? Well, right now, um, because I teach, um, my cosmetology program is um, just an elective in high school. And so in which I'm trying to work for getting um, my program to the point where they can actually obtain their hours in high school. Wait a minute. So right now, it's just an elective. So they don't get licensed? Mm-mm. Oh, wow. Mm-mm. So it's just an elective right now. What, what's and, that mean? Um, it's just been three. I've been teaching it um at the at the high school for three years, so the program is kind of fairly new. What state? Um, Georgia. Georgia. Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. So it's uh, quite a few um cosmetology programs in high schools that are only electives now. So um, I'm trying to get away from that mm -hmm. because of what I have to deal with each semester especially with um because I mostly get in the beginning uh freshmen coming from middle school to ninth grade mm -hmm. and I can tell you it's been a challenge for me I can imagine because I I get freshmen as well and I can imagine that I mean this was the first year that I actually got freshmen who they had to pay for their permit in order to get into my classroom those who did not pay were removed and see, that's oh. what I'm trying to get to. You need to go through some type of process to get into my classroom. Yeah. So that would eliminate a lot of behavior issues, discipline, and all. You know, yes. so I need students that are serious about the end. Exactly. Yeah, that's definitely. Does okay. anyone have, um, does any, anyone else have like a process to getting into their class or anything like that? Um, can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I do high school as well, um, and we don't really have a pro. This year is our first year. We're going to have a lottery because we have 180 kids interested in cause oh, one, man. which That's is awesome. there's only 88 spots. Right. So we have a lottery. But um, I had a question uh, from Miss Middlebrooks on her. Does your state allow for a high school program like leg like legislatively or? Is, does anybody have a high school program or is that something y'all are going to have to work on with your state board in order to get approved? Um, I believe there are some um, high school um, cosmetology programs that do have, the, you know, where they're, they're uh, set up to where they're able to um, get their hours while they're in high school. Okay. I just got to get with the right people so I can get that process started. So that's going to be one of my main focuses. Uh, for this summer trying to get that started up so because yeah. I would rather for my class 
for my program to be that way instead of just because sometimes I feel like they just don't have students in my classroom because yep. they don't have anywhere to go. Yeah, and it's a big you know hassle for me because for one, <clears throat> some of them don't they don't they don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then another issue I have where other administrative teacher councils whatever they tend to tell students um that don't worry about elective cl elective classes because it doesn't count so they feel like when they get in my class they don't have to work they don't have to put in any effort so i tend to be dealing with a lot of this yes so that's another issue i'm going to have to um <clears throat> address too this summer uh, with my administrator because they need to stop doing that yeah that's yeah. horrible I can understand that. I understand that just dumping them in there. Because like I said mm -hmm. before, this year, that was my class. They just now got to the point where cosmetology is not a dump. You have to pay to get in here. You have to, you know, just, yeah. So I'm with mm -hmm. you. That's that's horrible. Um, does anybody, I, does anybody do permits though? Does anybody have their, you have to do permits. How do you say your name? Shanna. Shanna. Okay. Just making sure. So how do you do, go about your permit situation, Shanna? So we're a team of three. So we have three instructors in our program. So what we usually do is we will have this, we'll put the um, permit online, um, but just for them to either fill it out through like PDF or um, they can print it and bring it the first day of school. Mm -hmm. And then well, one of us will sit in the office with the, we use, we're in Texas. So we have shears um, with mm -hmm. it pulled and one of us will just enter them one at a time so that yeah. we have of their information correctly we can ask them they're standing there we're like okay is this how you spell your name is this where you live because those babies don't know their zip code girl they Some don't know them. nothing they don't know the address <laughs> and so we are always like okay so you know is this right is this right and if they're like oh i don't know we will pull their information up from the school district yeah. and yeah. whatever's it um and and sometimes you know they're worried too because they'll use like i don't know somebody else's address to be in the mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. we're like, i don't care about that Tell right. me where you live, because this is where your rule book's going to come. This is where okay. all of your, um, like, this is the address we need. Right. Um, and they have to pay. We just tell them to bring a, um, like, a Visa or MasterCard credit, I, you know, the gift yeah. cards that you yeah. yeah, or a debit or credit card. Um, okay. And we just pay directly to Shears. We don't handle the money. We just use their information and put it right into Shears to pay for the permit. And it's so oh. much faster to mail them, but then you have to wait Forever. Yeah, a million years. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> when you do it online, it you print it immediately. They're permitted. It's so instant. If you have them, so put it on a MasterCard, and then you can enter mm -hmm. the information yourself. Yes, girl. Yes. See, that's, that's how we do. need this because I it's know. Yeah, okay. we print the permits out immediately. Give them a copy, and they're done. Moving along. I'm sorry, this is like my fifth time saying <laughs> intro kits. Do y'all have intro kits? No, no one does. Our district pays for all the supplies. So we just have like class sets of everything. Um, bad and good. Um, it's good because the kids don't have to come out of pocket, but then also when they leave, they don't get to take anything with them. So y'all y'all supply what they need for state board as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into some intro games and activities. What do you all do? Anybody have any ideas or things that you'd like to do? Like get to know you, introduction, name type games, not necessarily team building yet, but just like get to know you activities or things that you may do with your students to, you know, learn them. Well, I... um. Like I say, this um, this will be my third year teaching in a public high school because normally, um, well, total, I've been teaching for about 13 years. So, But usually I've taught, you know, like young adults in actual beauty school, preparing them for state board or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of still like in the trial and error, trying to see what's working for the students and what not, you know, what is not working. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I usually do uh, try to come up with some type of introduction um, activities, games to just kind of get them, especially the intro class, yes. to get them comfortable. Because again, most of my intros are ninth graders, so they're just getting to high school. They're mm -hmm. still in transition mode from middle school. So 
um, just kind of, but sometimes it's hard to kind of find fun activities to yeah, keep you engaged because yeah. we have moved to a block system, which um, we have four periods and each period is about an hour and a half. That's so mine too. I have students for like 90 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. That's tough. And you know how <laughs> short yeah. their attention span is. Yeah, it can be short. Girl, I, let me tell you something. I keep my students so busy. <laughs> Yeah. And see, that's what I need to that's what I need to focus on. Well, okay, so I'll start. A couple of things. Y'all, some of these things are on the blog on my website. So you've probably seen them. But like one thing that I keep is the nameplate little activity. I just have them to fold a sheet of paper in three so that it can stand up like a little triangle type of thing. And I have them to write their name on it and then just draw like five images around it that um represents them but that really it's like one of the first things I have them do I mean like when they come into class create a little nameplate that's helpful for me just because I can stand them up and I'm, I'm I'm processing and learning their names while I'm going over you know procedures and policies and everything that I go through so it's simple it's a little arts and crafts you know some of them may not even really put all of it into you know they're just but for me it is definitely helpful because I can look at their names and I'm starting to make you know connections between their faces and their names because I know for me it takes me a little minute you know I try my best to learn their names quickly mm -hmm. because I want to start building relationships and I know how you know how it is when somebody can't get your name so I, I'm trying to learn, you know, but that that is one of the first few things that I do is the nameplate activity. So um, I also like to play the name game. The way that I do it is, and I, I don't typically do it on the first day, but like one of the beginning activities, maybe the second or third class period, I have them because they're still like um, adjusting the students in my class and the numbers are constantly changing at the beginning of the school year. But um, I have them stand up in a circle and then I'll have them to say an adjective that describes them that starts with the first letter of their name. So like for me, I may say Sassy Smith and I'll start it off typically. So I'll say I'm Sassy Smith and then the person to the left or to the right of me, they have to go but they have to introduce me first and then they have to introduce themselves. And then the person next to them will introduce me and then the person before them and then themselves. And then it'll continue all the way around the circle until the last person on my opposite side has to start with me and go all the way around the entire classroom introducing everybody. So it kind of, it kind of helps, uh, you know, get to know everybody because, you know, it's. I think for me, it just creates a lot of laughter and stuff because, you know, they're all like, oh my gosh, I can't remember, you know. So it really does get them engaged. That has been my experience with it. It gets them engaged and they, they typically end up enjoying it, you know. So that's one of the things that I do just to, um, you know, get to know them and learn their names. Um, any anything that you all like to do? Well, my school is very different from mm -hmm. you guys because uh, I'm a private school, uh, very small. So I only have eight to 10 students at a time. Um, so what I do, little, I'm a little corny. So I it's play, okay, if you all know the song uh, from the King and I called Getting to Know You. Um, um it's getting to know. know you getting to know oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah so I blast that song first uh -huh. <laughs> so that song is just playing um but I give the students um a form ahead of time that has a few questions on it that's asking why'd you choose this you know who's your inspiration things like that um uh I give them and then um I'll have them to do like um uh, two truths and a lie we'll play mm -hmm. that game mm -hmm. so yeah after they go through the list of answering you know just a few questions about themselves um we'll go through the um two truths and a lie and then they'll get to ask the other students because I I don't usually have one whole class coming in it might be one person it may be two people 
mm-hmm. that's new to the class. It's just kind of getting to know everyone that's already been there. Right. So that's what I do. Okay. That sounds good. I like two truths and a lie. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Anyone else do anything for introduction games? I do have the form. I have a form as well, all about all about you form or all about me form, whatever y'all know. I have, I have one of those as well, and I have some questions on there, like you said, Miss Jessica. Like, why did you choose this? You know, what are you most interested in learning right. from cosmetology? You know, what are you least interested in learning? And then I also have like some questions, like you know, what's your favorite snack? What's your favorite candy? Yeah. So that when I'm wanting to get a prize or they've done something that I can you know pick out their favorite thing and most of the time by that time they forgot that they filled out the form so they really feel like I just (laughs) like I just know (laughs) so I like to do that too okay well this is what we have so far we just have the nameplate the name game all about two forms two truths and a lie Um, if y'all want to come back to it we can but we're going to move forward keep it pushing So the next thing is team building, team building games and activities. Any, anything special that you all do for a team building? Um, what I usually try to do with my intro class is because a lot of times the students, um, once again, going back to my beginning freshman or, you know, new freshman, they have a hard time trying to interact with other students. Mm -hmm. So what I do, um, is, once we start, I introduce them to their hands-on activities, their practical, which um, I have to start out with, okay, this is a comb. <laughs> this is a brush. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, this is what you do with the comb. This is how you use it. This is how you part. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but, uh, and then once we start um, practicing um, like sectioning and roller setting, I pair them together to kind of, because some of them um, have a hard time, especially with roller set, set, uh, roller setting, sectioning, they may have a hard time um, doing the nine section, the basic roller set. Mm-hmm. So I pair them with someone that has mastered that right. and get them work together. And um, so I found that um, effective because they start talking to each other and getting to know each other. Yes. Okay. And then I switch it around. Uh-huh. Okay, sounds good. So you like so you do start practicals pretty at the beginning of intro. Mm-hmm. Okay, because does anyone else do that? Because a lot I of do. People, they don't know how to part hair. They yeah, you're right. So it's like really brand new to them. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about you, Miss Casey? What do you um do practicals? We have cause one and cause two, and so we oh, start okay. as we only do eleventh and twelfth grade. Gotcha. And this for three class periods for both. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do teach cause one. Um, we don't do a whole lot of like get to know you games um, mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year. Honestly, we have learned that they're not very honest yet. And that if we wait until we build a little bit of a relationship individually, and then we do some more of those games, they're a little more comfortable. They're a little more open with their answers. And then we get a little bit better information. So when we come out of the game, right into safety and we do like an online safety module and it been it's two things it gets them you know like hey these are things if you don't pass this you can't go on the floor mm-hmm. and that kind of motivates them to do it correctly it gives us time to get everyone permitted because mm-hmm. they're working mm-hmm. um, and then you know we go into the salon and you know as early as we can we can that doesn't happen usually until like you know after two weeks but mm-hmm. we try to get as quickly as possible even if it's just like Miss Middlebrook said, parting hair. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. even though they're juniors, they're just as they don't know anything either. You know, mm-hmm. this is their first cosmetology class, right. and so we start real simple. You know, this is how you brush hair properly. Right. This is a, this is a rat tail comb. Mm-hmm. This is a, you mm-hmm. know very, um, but just letting them get in the salon and start to touch the mannequin and see mm-hmm. the thing it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Once we get going a little bit more into the, the school year, um, Race the Teacher race really teacher. pumps them up. They love Race the Teacher. So we'll do, say, perming. Okay, say we're rolling perms. You know, we do that for a little while, and then they feel like, man, I got this. I can roll mm-hmm. a perm two hours, you know, like. Mm-hmm. So we'll be like, all right, everybody, 
that up, get ready, don't start. We're going to race the teacher. Let's see how fast you are. You know, and then the teachers are up there knocking the permal up out in 25, 30 minutes. And now suddenly they're like, crap, I don't know anything. You know what I mean? Like, let me, let me hang on. I'm not nearly as ready as I thought I was. Right. And really, we get them all hyped up. You know, we'll be like, I got nine sections done, you know, and then, you know, all right, my first section's rolled. And then they're like, oh my God, stop it. You're making me so nervous. Uh -huh. um, fires them up. And we do it with a lot of different um, services. And they really do seem to like that. That gets everyone kind of fired up when there's the lull of, you know, doing something for the 30th time that's getting kind of boring and it really tries, tends to kind of get everyone more excited yeah I like that that's cute I like it okay and I like the see my um intro class the way that it has been the way that it was set up when I got into the program and I just kind of left it was that they didn't really do much much um hands-on and so we do cover, cause like with the teaks, I have to do like certain things in intro because I have intro and then cos one and cos two. And my cos one and cos two are like yours, uh, Miss Casey. I have three, they're triple blocks. Uh -huh. So we end up having them for like five hours, five hours and 20 minutes or something every other day. But in intro, I only have the one class period. That's about 90 minutes. And okay. it was pretty much book, 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 book. And then second semester is where we started introducing practicals. And I'll typically do practicals and then I'll do infection control like every, so I'll swap it out every other day. But I this year, I just want to change it. Mm -hmm. I want it to be more hands-on from the beginning, you know? So I like that you said- My coach, I have talked about that because um, this year our class is going to be maxed out right? We're going to have a huge amount of kids in our class. Mm -hmm. And in our honest setup, it's really hard to see everyone at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about how, how many things can we do in the classroom? Right. And so our electric, so we're going to, we've moved braiding into the classroom. Mm -hmm. So they have section cup um, mannequin stands, but we also have the regular mannequin stands that will go on the edge of the table. Mm -hmm. um, braiding can go in there you know, parting can go in the classroom yes. um, that we can do that doesn't require a shampoo bowl mm -hmm. or a um, electricity. And we're trying to move that into the classroom because it just gives us more control. Right. Um, it takes less time to get set up and all that. We just have a class set of things already in the classroom, set up, ready to go. Um, a lot of times we'll have the mannequins already on their stations when they get there. Yeah. Um, it gets them a little excited, but we've tried to move. Um, we did it a little bit this year and we're really going to try to do it next year more. Everything that we can get into the classroom, take it out of the yeah. classroom. Sounds yeah. Good. Yeah. That's typically what I do with intro as well. Cause we don't really go in the salon at all because while I have intro, my partner has cosmetology too. And I have three intro classes typically. So you know, while I have three intro classes, she has cosmetology two for three class periods. Right. So she's typically in the salon. So I cover like the same things you said, braiding, sectioning, you know, things like that, that I can do in my classroom with them. But I don't normally do it until second semester. And this year, I really want to incorporate more practicals from the start of the school year. I just think it'll help the students to just be more engaged and feel more like I'm in cosmetology, you know, like, you know, cause they, it does. Yeah. Better. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So um, <clears throat> my program is set up very different. It sounds like from all of you all. Uh -huh. So I have intro cause, uh, cause one and cause two, but then mm -hmm. I have um, the licensing program. So my kids, um, they start with me as freshmen and they go all the way through senior year. Mm -hmm we get them licensed but in my intro class my standards are set up to where we cover skin care and nail care so what our hands-on is um, manicures pedicures facials makeup um, and that's all they get in intro mm -hmm. and then we get into level two cause um, yeah intro cause two and cause three so in cause two then we do um, all hair care services and perms. And then in cause three, it's relaxers, hair cutting, and hair color. Mm. And then our the upper level classes, cause four and beyond, is all about them getting their hours. So they get all their hours in cause in the last 
Yes, because they take up the, um, I'm on block scheduling and they take a total of 12 cosmetology classes. So they have the first three, which is the pathway. They got to complete the pathway first. Then they go to cause four applications to cosmetology services. And then there's five practicum classes. Mm -hmm. The practicum classes have different, sorry, the practicum classes have different course numbers, but it's all the same class. And all they're doing is working on hours. And then their last class is their state board class. So, but I was saying that um, to say, Kiara, when it comes to in that intro class, getting them engaged, when when I took over my program, they were doing 100% book work. Theory, yeah. So, they, mm -hmm. so it wasn't even really meeting the standards. Right. So one of the things that I noticed is up front, okay, these are the standards I'm supposed to cover. How can I get them engaged and hands-on in the beginning? Mm -hmm. So one of my biggest things was, okay, let's start when we go into chapter one and we're talking about the history and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about history, but now let's talk about, um, makeup since, since mm -hmm. that's what we're going to go to. Mm -hmm. And we would do, we would do like a little exp you know, um, thing where we would make foundation the way that they made it back yeah. in the day you know yeah. in ancient egypt so you know i have the, the cocoa powder and the cornstarch and all of that stuff in my classroom so we just talked about this in this chapter now let's do a little hands-on application yes. to what we're doing versus let's pull out the mannequins and the combs and the brushes because that doesn't match my standards okay yeah. y'all well i'm glad that let me see miss douglas miss douglas said that because that was actually what she was when she was talking about just kind of incorporating some of those things into the history of cosmetology i had already started planning so in my mind the way especially i love the numa lady book do y'all have oh it? my god it's amazing i got it right mm -hmm. here yes okay so for history what i was thinking that i'm gonna do because i i want to kind of keep it the same way that it has been for my intro just because it does kind of align with it aligns with the teaks so I'm gonna keep covering you know history chapters one through four history life skills um communicating for success and that those type of stuff that type of stuff at the beginning but mm -hmm. I'm gonna start adding in some of those activities so like the stuff that I had down as ideas like when we get to the Africans one things that that it talks about the first page on page seven. That's the first thing that it talks about is Africans. So I'm going to set up, we're going to cover the little African section and then I'm going to give them, you know, so much time to do some Bantu knots. So I'm going to teach Bantu a little quick lesson with Bantu knots and I'm not going to have them do a whole style or anything, but just like, I'm thinking maybe something where I can put two of them, kind of like someone said earlier, where you have two of them on a, on a mannequin and just let them practice doing Bantu knots, two per mannequin in the classroom. And then when we go to the Egyptians, they they um talk about essential oils and massages. So I'm going to let them do hand massages and teach them, you know, hand massaging techniques and using some essential oils for that. So I thought that was a good idea just to kind of after each one, just kind of incorporate something that they can do to get them more out of the book and involved. And then it'll help them make the connection. You know, oh, remember we did the massages, mm -hmm. with the, you know. So I was thinking that. And then like with the, I also thought about henna. I heard people say they do henna. Have y'all done that? What do I, have do? Not. I was going to incorporate that, but I was going to use, um, I saw an activity for cosmopolitan where a teacher had used, uh, I guess eyeliner, like the gel eyeliner, just mm -hmm, to kind of mm -hmm. help them. And so I was going to let them, um, like practice paintings and stuff on their hands, and you know, as far as how they did with the henna. And um, but I also, um, I think one time I did have my intro um, class too. They made their own um, body scrub, hand scrub, lip scrub. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was fun um, for them too. Okay. Who has used the uh actual like henna? Has anyone how do you like that, Miss Casey? Um, it's okay. So we do it like we first we give them little copy paper hands, right? Mm -hmm. And then we do like a little lesson and we talk about how to do like the different circles and the arcs and building on your design and they create something. And then you can order like bulk henna from Amazon. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and that's what we do, and then we mix it up and it's got it for you know 24 hours or whatever, and then you can put it in like Ziploc baggies. 
-hmm. and then we just kind of pipe it and then they can do it and we spend a day with that they really like it yeah um, where did you get the lesson from for the henna we made it up okay. can you um when you get time and you find out whichever henna it is that you use uh -huh. can you send me that information and Absolutely. i'll include it on here and then i'll you know because i'll post this somewhere where we can all have access to it Mm -hmm. what I'm typing on so you know okay. just in case you want to refer back to it but yeah I thought henna was good <laughs> for um you know when we covered the Egyptians and then I thought about like basic nail polish applications when we get to the Chinese and they talked about the royal colors and nail tinting um what else they did um the romans they talked about like facials and what they use for facials so i just thought about like doing a quick facial but letting them do it on the mannequins because they are intro and i'm not gonna take the time out to really go through the whole basic facial you know on each other type of thing but just the intro letting them do maybe like a, a now that's one thing that i did incorporate in my intro class that's the last facial. thing that they learned was the basic facial but do you it, think that's good to start off with? That may not be good to start. I don't know. I don't well, know. not not in the beginning of that's one of the like it's towards the end of the yeah. Semester. So yeah. that's the last thing um that they kind of touched on with the basic facial. Right. Yeah, because okay. in my my intro class, their final exam, they um I I give them a state board final, so their final is the basic facial and one hundred and ten written exam just like it would be if they go to state board and so i get up and do like people i would do um so they have to learn that basic facial and they put everything in their three bags and everything we start that at intro okay. so when i them, yeah when i teach them the basic facial i'm teaching it state state board okay does your state board use models or mannequins for facial man uh they use mannequins for everything okay mm -hmm. yeah we do yeah I spell mannequins. Is it? It's two ways, but the short but, way. Right. M A N I K I E. Okay, that's I always get them confused. I'm like, is that right or what? But that's yeah, yeah that's correct. The but mannequin the version. N I. <laughs> the Q U I N is the full body mannequin. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. I'm like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. These are just things that I thought of. Like I said, I saw Greeks that talks about like the full, like basically like a halo type of braid. So I thought about letting them do like a halo braid mm -hmm. when it got to the Greeks. Um, and then they talked about Shignons, Shignons. Shignon. Shignon. How you say it? Shignon. Shignon. Don't judge Or however the way it come out at the time. Yeah, because that's, look, and my students be like, Shignon. <laughs> <laughs> they saying it how I'm saying it. I don't know. But yeah, I just thought about basically y'all get the point. I thought about when going through the the history, just kind of covering, you know, each group and then letting them do short little activities in between. So how do you go about with the people of like the, the um the pioneers like madam cj walker mm -hmm. you know previously i wouldn't do i would it would be a little different because i gave them like a this activity is on my website too it's a it's a handout that i would give them and so they would like i would assign each group so many questions and it, the questions would be based off of the era or the person so like maybe one through three would be about africans and then you know four through six may be about the Egyptians and so on and so forth. And it would cover all of the different people and the eras in cosmetology. And I would have them to work in a group to do presentations. So as they would present, everyone would be able to fill in their notes. And that's kind of how we would go through doing a little timeline history, a little timeline type of, because I would put all of the slides together and let them make it a timeline type of activity. So I thought about doing. I have that one too. I'm yeah. actually looking at it now. Yeah, I have. Yeah, that see, so that's how we would typically cover it. And I'm thinking I might still. I don't really know. I'm all over the place because I want to do something different. But like I said, by incorporating these little activities, I think that'll be cute and different. But how do I 
do I still, how do you get, do y'all students take notes? Do y'all make them take notes? Like, do you give them handouts? What do you do? Well, for so, me, I find it where, I find it better for me to, I give them like notes, handout of notes, but I kind of <laughs> leave a few, like some fill in the blanks where they have mm -hmm. to actually find some of the answers themselves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I give those that, um, they uh, mostly use those for uh, studying for their test exams. Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, Ms. Douglas? I'll say it's, uh, <laughs> I'll give them the hands out to take the notes. And then what they end up doing is taking a picture of the PowerPoint. And filling it in. And filling it in later. Mm -hmm. So I kind of let it go with the note thing because what I realize is it's, it's just a constant battle that I'm trying to fight that it's really not worth the time wasted. As long as they can show me that they know the information and mm -hmm. I know that every learner is different. Right. <laughs> found myself fussing like you need to write this down because that's how you retain right. and then it's they be like well, this is what you said and then they'll regurgitate it back to me and I'm like oh so you were paying attention so right. I've kind of kind of loosened mm -hmm. up of forcing them to take notes thing because this generation is just different yeah, yeah I, agree. I agree and they don't want to read the book they no, don't I deal with but, that. they don't want to read the book but you know what I've done which um was really really fun I did it this school year for the first time is I assigned like two pages to this group, two pages to this group, mm -hmm. and had them make a TikTok video okay. information back and teaching it to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that worked out really well because it was like, you know, they get their little 30 second, 45 second TikTok video. Mm -hmm. They put to a dance and they got the words popping up on the screen and they're pointing to it and stuff, and they were engaged. So I'm like, I had to start speaking to them in their language. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. One hundred percent, I'm with you. And you know, stuff like that is so. What I find myself doing is a array, a whole bunch of stuff. I do have my students to take notes, but a lot of times I let them take them how they will prefer to take them. So I don't make them take them a particular kind of way. They can make note cards. They can make a little table. They can make it how they want to. But I want them to take the notes. But I do understand, like you said, that every learner is different. So I want them to have the notes just to be able to look back on if need be. But we do, you know, different things as well to engage them in different ways for those different types of learners. So I love that TikTok idea. We have them do not necessarily a TikTok, but things like that, you know, to just engage in different ways to help them retain the information. So that that's really good. I'm trying to type it. Um, sorry, y'all. Uh, oh, hold on, y'all. Give me a second. So, who of you all have already started using the new textbook? I'll be starting it um this next um this the new school year coming up. Okay, yeah, so will I. So we started it already. And how's it going? I love it. It went really well. Um now, like I said, this was my first year, so I wasn't used to the mind tap and some of some of the other, you know, programs that work really well. I didn't have a problem with it, but my part the partner, uh my partners who taught uh fourth, fifth, and the work-based learning she struggled with it because she's so used to the mind tap and stuff like that. So, but this was my first year. So I was, I was okay with it. Are you guys using SEMA? Yeah, SEMA. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so it was that's what I'm seeing trying to maneuver through is the SEMA, you know, trying Yeah, to it was a, an adjustment for her, but this is my first year. So I was okay. Mm-hmm. So I won't be using SEMA because my district has its own online system. So I'm basically having to build everything inside of their online system, which is really freaking annoying. Yeah, I know yeah, it, it is. It is. <laughs> it's already done for you. I don't know why they would do that. So I'm going to be spending my summer oh, trying no. to pull stuff over into their online system, which I'm just like, Ugh. Oh my and goodness. Yeah. 
So why why do you have to do that? They don't they're not supplying it because we have slides, we have everything basically. So no, I so I have the, the teacher support materials, but what I'm saying yeah. is my my digital classroom, I have to completely build my in my district system that they have. They're not gonna like, pay for access. They're not gonna pay for right. Right. So okay. Have, I have a SEMA account for myself that mm-hmm. I personally purchased a seat in so mm-hmm. that I can have access to the videos and everything. Oh, yes. They're not um, going to pay for your every student. Yeah. Able to okay. use it. No. Yeah, that sucks. We started yeah. the SEMA. I did not like it. Really? Did you I use MindTap? We did. And we went back to MindTap for the rest of this year. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's leaving. Like, we don't have a choice. I think we're going to go with Pivot Point Lab for next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is good too you know because then they get both um, yeah, online yeah, very sure. lady mm-hmm. text classroom and then we can do pivot point um online but i really didn't like the reports in sema i didn't like how it ran my time reports as seconds um and then it says that you can use the app i mean yeah the app on the cell phones but every time this student Um, say they get a notification, right? You know how you swipe up and you go to like your text messages and you swipe down. Mm -hmm. It would log out for fifth and and max them out at 15 minutes. And then when they swiped back over, they were back in. So if they did that a whole bunch of times, it was going 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes Mm -hmm. for every time. And I wasn't getting accurate reports. Um, Then if I looked like, so if I ran my time clock report, it would say, you know, X amount of time. But then if I went back and I went under their, um, specific, you know, like student A and their time in course, which is what the student can see, it would mm-hmm. be a different. Number. Oh, okay. So. so I did not like it. And I went through all the way up to like Zoom trainings with like the VP of SEMA. And I just, it, it didn't, it didn't do what we needed it to do. And we finally just requested a refund and went back to um, MindTap. Okay. For the really? Year. Mm-hmm. So you're still you so look now I'm like so you still use uh Montap or SEMA for hours? Yeah, we do distance learning. Once you get approved through uh TDLR for distance learning, the students could get up to 250 hours online. So, and but you don't have to... so in September it's up to 500 hours online. Really? Okay, uh-huh. so how does it, I don't really know much about it. Like with the distance learning, is it simply yeah. just being able to incorporate? them being able to retain hours off of seeing yeah when they're so um it's really helpful for like if all of the instructors aren't going to be there and they can't be on the clock they can log in and still get hours through their distance okay. learning platform they can also do hours at home um now you still have to do all of your you know hands-on stuff in class clearly yeah, but yeah, yeah. you can do a ton of theory or review and stuff like that online um and it's really really helpful to get those students to get their hours yes that was Just, yes. I have to make sure that because it doesn't take the kids long to figure out how to manipulate the system right? exactly it's really really fast so yeah. I put like you can't get more than x amount of hours per month right I max yeah. them out yeah. um and I make it a grade so that they have to do at least so many mm-hmm. um and it's made a huge difference in our students hours like yeah it, now, I know that like, okay, this is not replacing my theory, right? Like I still have to go in and teach that. Yeah, of course. Sometimes if I assign, you know, like chapters one through four ahead of time, and then the next week they come in and that's what I'm teaching, they have a baseline. Exactly. Yeah. That... Four. Exactly. See, we were still using MindTab, but once, you know, everything with COVID was over, I didn't realize that I knew I heard people talking about the distance learning but I guess I didn't really in my mind I'm thinking like oh so they have students at home that are just like like you know I didn't Mm -hmm. I don't know my mind wasn't making the connection that it was just another way for them to clock time and not necessarily meaning like you got a pregnant student at home or something right no okay yeah oh that's good information to know okay perfect okay let's move forward because we're our time is 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 dwindling away, but let's at least see if we can get to career paths. Do y'all have anything in particular that you all do um, during history of cosmetology for the career paths portion? Um, so I have a list of different um, careers that they could potentially do. Mm-hmm. And so I'll um, they do a project 
-hmm. And so I find every group like two careers and then I'll have them pick a third um, or sometimes even a fourth. And then they research, they have to find out um, what the income is for this career and what, what education is required for it and um, how much the how much they could potentially make and all of that information mm -hmm. and also find some 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 of those positions that are available locally right now oh, okay. uh, like that and they put it all in a powerpoint and they get up and do a presentation in front of the class and i make sure that every single person has to speak when they do the presentation mm -hmm. i want to be responsible for each slide mm -hmm. um so grading them if you didn't do your part you don't get the grade exactly. now, with every project so yeah. I want to be responsible for what, but they, they kind of, they really get into the, the project, especially for those who like really want to get into cosmetology. This is kind of when you can tell who's interested because they get like really in depth with their research. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. I love it. That sounds really similar to like what I do. The, uh, the activity that I posted on the blog on my website is a cosmetology career magazine. And so I make them create a magazine. In the past, I had them actually make a physical magazine, but now I let them do it, like how you said, like on a Google slide presentation. And I tell them that they have to cover, um, you know, so many that are given in the book. And then I allow them to, because, you know, like in the book, in this chapter, at least, it doesn't have like the basic hairstylist or like mm -hmm. makeup artist. It's just strictly specialist, salon trainer, manufacturing right. educator you know it doesn't have like which those are good for them to know but it doesn't have the basic stuff that a lot of them are interested in right so I, I assign I, I don't assign I allow them to choose um you know so many in the book and then I'll tell them and then you have to include you know so ever many more however many more and I have them to create a magazine but I have them to kind of do it like you said Miss Douglas with those same type that same information like how much they make they have to include pictures they have to include you know a basic summary of what the job a job description basically and um so I can't remember what all I have them put on there, but that's really good. So it's really similar. And then I do make them do presentations as well. So that's good. Anybody do anything different? Anything else? Well, I had several students um, to say that they wanted to be salon owners. Um, and so I, I saw someone post uh, the Shark Tank project. Uh -huh. um, so I recently had them to do that. So that was really, really cool. Okay. Um, yeah, for them to pitch, you know, they had to find out all things business, you know, what things cost. Would you booth rent? Would you commission? Would, you know, was it cost to start up a salon? You know, they had to come up with all those things. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Sounds good. I do that project in my state board class, and that's when they build their 3D model and, mm -hmm. yeah, do all of that. So it yeah. becomes very intense. It's a semester long project. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, like the salon business portion of it. Yeah, yes, I do that too. That sounds good. I haven't done the Shark Tank type of setup, but by the time they get done having to present the information to me, it may as well be Shark Tank. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, y'all. This sounds good. I don't know. I know I said an hour, and it has been an hour. It's eleven o three. So we can save life skills for later or y'all want to just go ahead and do it real quick. And then next time that we pick up, we can pick up with the next subject. It's up to y'all. I'm fine with continuing. Yeah, I'm fine. Still mine. Okay, sounds good. Let's, let's see. We have a couple of things on here. What about life skills? Like what types of things do y'all have your students do for life skills? So um, life skills is like when I really get to know these kids for real. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is more of a discussion-based um, portion, like when we're going through life skills, because what I find with, with me having a teenage daughter, mm -hmm. she already knows it. She's going to be used as an example in the class. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about yeah, like how we talk to each other and you know I'll I'll give them an example of how my daughter may have said something to me with a tone mm -hmm. and she can 
certain response from me. Well, this leads into an hour discussion about parents and tone. And so I'm able to kind of bring it back around and let them see where they could be, you know, make an adjustment with that. So every every part of the life skills chapter it really ends up being real world scenario. And it's usually nine times out of 10 based upon their relationship with their parents. Right. That's so, but, but it, it gives them the opportunity to get some stuff off of their chest and then understand where their parents are coming from. Um, and it, it makes them open up and then they start to feel closer to me as well. And then they can, you know, well, Miss Douglas, can I, can I, okay, I got this problem now. So how do I say this to my mom? And so it kind of, that's, that's like, this ends up being our relationship builder, this chapter. I like it. It sounds good. I, I agree. We, it, it is a, a lot of real world scenarios and I'm giving them different, you know, things and examples and stuff like that as well. And I guess that's why in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, and that's good. I love for it to be set up that way, but I'm thinking like, how can I make it more engaging aside from just real world scenarios? What type of activities can I do to help them engage more than talking? Oh, uh, because role playing is always good. Role playing is something that I do. And I will like for the section, um, I'm trying to find it. Oh, that can, you know, they got two different books now. So, <laughs> right. But what you, a, a good thing to do is mm -hmm. when we role play, when we're talking about body language, have mm -hmm. them play only using body language mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see if you the entire conversation. Like, okay, what, like, give, give the group the scenario, but they got to act it out using body language. And then get the rest of the class. Okay, what was the conversation? What was the resolve? Mm -hmm. what, so that they can understand the different ways of communicating. Yeah. That kind of communication chapter, but, you know. Yeah, it still works. It still fits. Yeah, I'm with you. I kind of have them do in like, there's a, a portion in here where it's like um specific. I, I'm trying to find it so that I can. Uh, well anyway there's like a section in chapter two where it has like particular things like diplomacy pleasing tone of voice emotional stability when it gets to that part where it talks about all of those things I'll assign um I'll put them in groups and I'll assign each group a term whatever you know let them go through the section I'll have them to create a like you said a scenario so they may have to they create anything like for example, diplomacy, one thing that they may do is like, um, you know, having to tell someone that their breath stinks. That's just something the kids like to do, mm -hmm. you know, well, you want to do that you in a diplomatic way so that you are not being, you know, rude. Maybe if it's your friend being able to pull them to the side and be like, girl, here's some gum, you know, I want to, you know, whatever, but I'll have them to create little scenarios that they have to act out and then the class will have kind of like charades have the class to mm -hmm. guess which one they're demonstrating so they typically have fun with that and sometimes they like to they'll they want to show you how to do it right and then how to do it wrong mm -hmm. so, you know they have fun <laughs> demonstrating how to do it wrong because they really put on the show <laughs> so that's something that I think is really fun so I have kind of an ongoing um thing is is what we call our tuning tuesdays mm -hmm. what is and it it's called? basically uh-huh what is it called i call it tuning tuesdays tuning tuesdays okay <laughs> but you guys probably have like in the beginning of your class you may have a motivational moment or whatever something mm -hmm. like that so i have that on tuesdays um and so we may watch um a little a little short video of some type of motivation or whatever and what i find is from those I'm able to incorporate life skills in that because the con it just really builds on conversation um, of the students from there. And so I find those opportunities to kind of hit on kindness. How do we really want to, you know, treat each other or what's the distractions in your life and how do we identify those? What do we do about it? Things like that. What, what type of goals? What do we really want, you know, in our life? You yeah. know, at different points, I'll ask them that. I asked in the beginning, but then as a few months have gone on, I may ask, has anything changed? 
Mm-hmm. You know, what are the things you're going to do to to reach that first one? And so that's what I use my um, Tuesdays for. Sounds good. I like it. Something else that just popped in my mind would be like something like for the section of long-term and short-term goals. Mm -hmm. You know, we have them write them out, but maybe having them to do like peer interviews. So they Mm -hmm. interview um, a partner and, you know, help them to be a little more engaged. What would three of your short-term goals be? What would three of your long-term goals be? And then, you know, we could go through and do a class, just presentation real quick, where you just, they just have to introduce their partner and share one of their short-term and long-term goals or something like that to keep them, you know, to help them to do something a little different aside from, because I don't know, I find myself just in chapters like this. It's, it can be hard to keep them engaged and you don't want to hand them a whole bunch of worksheets or you don't want to have them, you know, just doing a, a bunch of independent activities, the whole entire chapter, because it's boring, you know, and they lose track, they lose focus. So just doing things like that helps them to be a little more engaged with each other and doing something different, you know? How many students do y'all have in your classes? Average ballpark? Like at a time, like 30 and through. In the CTE program, um, I can only have 25, up mm-hmm. to 25. Mm-hmm. I have about, um, I can have up to about 30. Okay. Or so. But over the time, in the beginning of the semester, I may have 30, 33. But once they, because they're still placing students, students are changing their schedules. Mm-hmm. So, but um, ultimately, I mostly end up between, um, I would say about 25 to, I would say 30 students. Okay. I'm just curious, because we have three teachers, so we can have up to 75, mm-hmm. but we, there's two of us teach cause one and one of us teaches cause two. And so cause two has however many, right? If that are going to come back, say mm-hmm. three come back, or then however that bulk is what we can have in cause one. Right. So we have between 40 and 48 at a time in the classroom. So a lot of these, um, like have them present things are really hard for us to do. Yes. So many kids right. that we're presenting for hours. Yes. And so, I don't know, it's just, it's a little, it's something that I need to figure out a, I don't know, a better way to do it. Or we do a lot of like, um, like you were saying, like with the TikTok videos, or we'll do like create a blog post or, you know, Mm -hmm. things like that that we can then show a few and talk about them. But it's really hard for us to do, um, you know, where all the kids present and everybody talk. We just don't have time for it. Right. Yeah. That makes sense for you. You just like how how you do it. Keep it like how you do it. Even if you do you know presentations just keep track of who presents and yeah. that you know if y'all were to do an interview you know like I just said have so many of them presented and then with your next little short activity that you do have the different group yeah. present yeah. yeah just to because I think they should be in the habit also of presenting and mm-hmm. of having to speak in front of the class So I think it's good for you to incorporate the presentations. But like you said, you do not have time to do all of those presentations. So just keep yours where you just do so many presentations per thing, you know? Yeah. Do you guys also uh, take clients with that many students? We do. We take um, clients on Fridays only. Um, and we only do it during class time. We don't stay after school for like a salon night or anything like that. We used to in the past, but uh, oh. only last time. And so we're limited on what services we can do, right? Because they're oh. with me about two and a half hours. So no, we don't do any chemicals on clients. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. We only do um, things that they can get done in a shorter amount Real of time. Quick. Exactly. Um, we, our program has gone through a lot of changes. Um, <laughs> So our school district decided a couple of years right before COVID that um, the cosmetology program couldn't keep any um, revenue it made from the salon, that it would have to go back into general budget. No. I'm super petty. And I was like, well, I just won't have a salon anymore. Like, forget y'all. And then COVID happened, right? So then the salon was closed for a year and a half, whatever. Mm -hmm. So when we opened it, I was like, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do free services for the community. 
I'm not going to charge because it's not going to benefit my kids and my program. I'm certainly not going to give it to you to spend on the football field. Let's be real. Exactly. Um, so we do services for free and I've partnered with like the local nursing home and um, some other things and they come every other week and they bring a busload of residents yes. and the, get the services done for free. They love it. My kids love it. It gives the kids an opportunity to work with someone with a disability, something they probably yes. wouldn't have gone practice with um, otherwise. And so it's really working out great. Like our Fridays are super busy now. Um, we assign um, the kids each get assigned a client before they show up, mm -hmm. like before the client. And so it's all written on the board. Um, we try to pair them up, you know, like if there's someone coming in and they're going to get a manicure and a pedicure, well, we're going to have somebody doing the manicure the same time they're getting their pedicure. Exactly. Um, things like that so that they can do that. And then we assign um, students who don't have clients are assigned as assistants. And so their job is to keep the salon clean and moving to talk to the residents and say like, okay, you know, what's your name? Okay. I'll let your client, your stylist know you're here. Mm -hmm. And we just, everybody's got a job. <laughs> they need to be busy at all times. Right. Um, so we uh, are very, um, Fridays are good. We've figured out a system. They work really well, but that's the only time we do clients. Yeah. Oh, wow. What I'm running into guys, I'm hoping you can help me with in my mindset with this. I, I think I'm um, I'm extremely paranoid about uh, oh so a little background my um, I actually just moved my salon my school uh, into a nursing home we're actually attached to they have like a wellness center side where it's the pool and the gym and it's us it's the salon and so um, I think I'm working way too darn hard <laughs> I can tell you that with um, the students work. And so I kind of need some guidance on that. I get really nervous about um, just how they're flowing through the process. I think I'm trying to run it too much like a professional salon, mm -hmm. more so than a school. Mm -hmm. And I really need to pull, pull back on that. So how do you all deal with um, your students working on clients? I don't know how many clients you would have in a day uh, of you know, of student services, but maybe students who haven't fully grasped things that you're really trying to help along and they're just way slow. I guess I'm more concerned about my reputation, <laughs> you know, here and um, just things like that, um, of wanting them to want to come back for us to produce a good product going out the door. Uh, how, how do you guys deal with with that is it just you is it I don't know I mean no I'm saying oh, oh you mean in the, the school it's just me yeah and I oh. and I have some help from my I'm training my daughter but she's only a year out of beauty school she's she's doing great you know but but um but yeah it's it's really just me so uh I'm in, I'm by myself okay with my student salon and on any given day, I may have 15 to 20 students working in the salon. Wow. But what I do is I only allow their allow them to book for appointments that they've been cleared for. So what that means is they start off with um, facials, manicures, pedicures. Mm -hmm. And so in the classroom, we may be working on, you know, blowouts and then once they have done enough blowouts in class and I clear them to take them on clients mm -hmm. then they start taking blowouts on clients yeah um, I do the same with I, they don't go on the floor until they've shown me you know but still I don't know they I don't know maybe it's me they just seem to the thing is at the end, or, uh -huh. it's a school so people are signing a waiver saying that they're right. getting their and by students under the supervision of a licensed instructor. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I make sure that my guests understand, like when I go in and I sign off on their ticket for them to start their service, I, I tell them, thank you so much for coming in to be a part of our learning today. So they mm -hmm. have it in their brain mm -hmm. that, oh, you're not getting a professional service. This is a exactly. student. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when, when students need me to come over, I'll make a comment. Okay, that's excellent learning. 
you know, and I say it, yes. the client hears it. So I'm constantly reinforcing, this is a school. Don't exactly. come with no professional expectations because these yeah. are students. So yeah. therefore, when they exceed those expectations, then they get to, to laughing and bragging and having a good time and they want <laughs> the TikTok yeah. video. And if they just meet the standard of this is a student, the 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 um the client is now saying, Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your learning process today. I can't wait to see what you learn next time I come back. Yeah, because they awesome. understand where we're at. So yeah. if you using that verbiage with your clients, trust mm -hmm. me, you'll be fine. I love oh, good. it. That's do you good. guys ever get in? Are you hands on in that way? So if the student needs some help, do you get in and start doing some things and then you back <laughs> off? Do you finish yeah. the work? What do you guys do? It depends on what's necessary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's it necessary? depends on what's necessary. If I have to, if I hate to, I do not want to take over my students' work and I don't have to. Okay. Typically. But if I have to, I am not letting nobody walk up out of my salon looking yes. crazy. So right. if I have to go back in and just finish up something real quick and make it a lesson, because if I finish it, you're going to stand right here and watch me finish it and you're going right. to watch what I'm doing. Right. Right. And I'm still going to be teaching exactly here to the client that I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and then even the client will end up like, oh, I just learned something new today. How cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, right. But that is a classroom and your clients need to understand that's a classroom. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Well, y'all, I really enjoyed our time. Um, we came up with, we did a lot of talking about different things. I typed some of the stuff up. Some of it was kind of hard to type, but either way, I think it was successful. What do y'all think? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed. Yes, I especially enjoyed it. Okay, well, I, like I said, I'll put the information out. Y'all just be on the lookout and then we'll schedule a time for next Monday. Y'all think of some topics. Y'all think of, you know, whatever y'all want to discuss. I just want this to be an open place for us to be able to connect, network, plan, whatever. Throw some yes. ideas out there. I love it. Yeah, sounds great. All right. Well, Thank it was so good. This. Thank y'all so much for joining Bye. me. Bye. Bye. Y'all take care.